So as I was working with our molecule model here of two atoms, I couldn't help but think of a bola, you know, where you have the two weights connected at the end of a string and you toss it in the air and it rotates around as it's sailing up and down and then you can you can wrap it around. Uh, well, originally they were used to wrap around your, 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 your prey when you're hunting. You can also, uh, you know, play a little horseshoe game where you're trying to wrap them around, uh, you know, horizontal rods. And I thought that would be a neat thing to try to simulate. And so that's what I've done here is taking our molecule and just kind of throwing it into the air uh, or into the into the atmosphere, I guess. We, we don't have a drag force yet. Um, so what I've done here is I've given them a, a, a momenta such that they will kind of go around each other. So I've kind of been fiddling with the numbers here. That's why it has all the 0.75 and everything. Uh, but basically this one, uh, the green one starts out heading uh, more to the right than it does up. It's going up a little bit, but it's, mo it's more going to the right. The red one does more heading up than it does going to the right. And so these actually have different magnitudes of momentum. So they're not quite rotating around each other. Uh, they, they do have a, a, a forward momentum there. And then I've done the, the conservation, uh, not the conservation. And then I've calculated the center of mass like we've seen before. Um, I've taken out the center of mass graph. I think we've, we've seen that enough. We can add that back in if we need to. Uh, but then I've added uh, these make trails because I want to be able to see you know, the pattern that they took. And so again, green and red are being updated by the uh, by the Euler Cromer method, just like we've seen uh, you know a dozen times by now. And so when you look at each one individually, they make a pretty interesting graph. It's not quite a parabola, right? Because a parabola doesn't have these little jagged points here and here and here, uh, or this little dippy part here. You know, a parabola is nice and smooth and just has you know the singular concavity. These guys, they're changing concavity. So it's like there's a little bit of parabolic region, a little bit of parabolic region, but it's like they're, they're being jerked around a bit. And then this white curve here represents the center of mass. And the way I've created that is by adding another object to the, uh, to the animation. I've made a sphere. I've made it really, really small. Uh, basically, you can't, you can't really see it. It's kind of embedded in the, in the spring there. But basically, this thing always has a position given by the calculation of the center of mass. So this thing that we were graphing before, uh, I've now made it into a sphere, into an object on the screen so you can actually see it. And what you notice, if you uh, can try to ignore the red and the green for the moment, is that it traces out a parabola. Because again, the center of mass is always going to follow whatever a point particle would. So a point particle would move in a uh, a parabolic uh, projectile trajectory. So this thing is moving in a parabolic trajectory, just like in uh, in projectile motion. And so you can play around with the different properties of this thing. Let's suppose, for example, that you wanted to uh, start these uh, atoms out farther apart. So let's suppose uh, instead of being uh, on equal footing in the x direction, this one was a little bit to the right, and let's say a little bit up. Uh, this, that's going to increase the stretch in the spring, so these two are going to uh, vibrate back and forth a little bit more. So you see that they're stretched out more, so now they're, they're vibrating around each other. And so we're getting some pretty wild motion here. They're doing uh, kind of like a sine and cosine around the center of mass. But the center of mass continues to move along at a parabola. So again, the, the center of mass is not being animated by euler cromer method. We're not doing anything with COM other than calculating this sort of weighted average of the position of green and red based on their mass. And so this weighted average, this center of mass, always gives you a parabola thanks to that, no matter what these things are doing around that. Uh, you could also get the same effect. Let's suppose I change those back. You'd get a similar effect uh, just by changing the unstretched spring length. So let's suppose we cut that in half. Now the oscillations are a little bit tighter, but they're still, again, oscillating around the center of mass. And so it, it kind of doesn't matter what the atoms themselves are doing because the center of mass is always going to obey this parabolic trajectory, which is pretty cool because that's, I mean, that's how we're able to work with extended objects. And if we throw them with a rotation, you know, their center of mass still follows us no matter what kooky things the, the atoms are doing around the center of mass.
So anyway, there's a lot of rich physics you can explore with this. So on the problems at the end of the video, um, I'm going to ask you to do a few things like graph the relative position of the uh, of the red and the green. So basically you take red dot pause minus com dot pause and graph that and take green dot pause minus com dot pause and graph that and see what kind of rules that behaves. You can also do that with their velocities to graph the relative velocities. And then you can also, uh, by now you know a little bit about rotational motion, I think. So you can also get the rotational velocity of these things around the center of mass. And uh, it'll be pretty cool. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.